We now present another episode in a radio series based on the world-famous BBC comedy success, Steptoe and Son. <laughs> With Harry H. Corbett as Harold. Oh, God. I'll soon be time to get up. Uh-huh. Face another day of that sneaky, conniving old twit. <laughs> I can't act like a normal father, that's all I asked. He's holding me back all the time. I wants to travel. Yeah. I wants to see the dawn come up like thunder. I don't want to hear about it. I want to see the Taj Mahal and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, the hanging gardens of Babylon and all those little darlings on the beaches of Tahiti <laughs> wriggling in their grass skirts. The old misery guts are just moan about his hay fever, isn't it? <laughs> Wilfred Bramble as Albert. I know he doesn't want me. He'd like to see me in an old people's home, he would. But I won't give in to him. It's not a crime to be getting old. If ever I got into one of them places, I'd drive them mad. I'd go on hunger strike. I'd, I'd throw the grub back at him. I'd ring bells in the middle of the night. Oh, good Lord, Bennett, that's enough of that. Why he can't get himself up in the morning? He'd sleep to all hours if it weren't for me. This week, Walla Walla Cat's Meat. <laughs> Girl, why has it always got to be me first up in the morning? <sighs> Must have a fag wake me up proper. Now, where did I leave him? Ah. Oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Harold, <laughs> time to get up. Harold, <laughs> Harold, <laughs> I'm not going to call you again. Harold, <laughs> don't do that in my ear first thing in the morning, please. Your breakfast is ready. You'll be late on the round. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> How many times do I have to ask you not to smoke when you're dishing out my food? <coughs> Look, I've got ash now all over my cereal. <laughs> it's very difficult to remove little bits of ash with a spoon. <coughs> oh, gold. But why don't you take that fag out of your mouth first thing in the morning? As soon as you wake up, you've got a fag on. You know it makes you awk your lungs up? Coughing and splattering around the ass is disgusting. I can't do without me fag in the morning. Sets me up for the day. Yeah, they should take a picture of you first thing in the morning and put it on the bronchitis adverts. Yeah, that'll stop with smoking. Where is the milk for my cornflakes? Oh, it's on the step. I forgot to bring it in. Then perhaps you would care to go out of a step and bring it in? And perhaps you would also care to bring in the newspaper and any correspondence that should have been put on my plate and ain't. This ain't the Savoy, you know. I ain't no batter. I ain't no Admiral Crichton waiting for you on your beck and call. Oh, don't bother. I'll do it myself. Same as everything else in this house. If you want anything done, do it yourself. I don't know. The kids are today. Honour thy father and thy mother. That's gone right up the spout, that has. Here's your milk. And now I've got my paper. The Financial Times. Oh, hello. Yeah. Hello. I see Gold's up again. Oh. Yeah, another threatens an ounce. Oh, I'm not surprised. Oh, it had to come. Milk, it's... son? Down, shake it. I like the top of it on my cornflakes. <laughs> oh, look. The pound was steady in Paris. Oh, that's a good sign. Yeah, what do you want to bother with all that stuff for? Look, Dad, times has changed. I mean, you've got to study the market trends. I mean, it's no use collecting old mangles and gas stoves if there's going to be a world glut of iron, is there? Yeah. But if there's a shortage of anything, I mean, I want a yard full of it out there. Make some money for a change. 
We was caught with our trousers down at Suez, wasn't we? <laughs> and we had nothing out there in the yard, nothing. We could have made a fortune. If you put the two bob a week you spend on that paper of yours into my football coupon, we'd stand more chance of making a fortune. Oh, if ever I get so desperate to do the football pools, I certainly wouldn't do them on your coupon. How many draws came up last week? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. <laughs> the record number of draws. And how many did you have? Yeah, shut up. Come on, how many did you have? You know very well how many I had. I know how many you didn't have. <laughs> you didn't have them all. <laughs> you must have been the only bloke in the country who didn't get a dividend. I'll get the pools up one day. And when I do, don't you come running round on here, old, cos you won't get anything. That's right. Go on, dream your life away. What's left of it? Oh, look, a photograph in the paper. <gasps> Mr. Albert Steptoe receiving a cheque from Eamon Andrews for the sum of £192,000, 12 shillings and sixpence. This money will not change my way of life, said Mr. Steptoe. Yeah. I shall carry on being a rack and bow man. My son Harold won't get anything because I'm giving his share to the horse. Yeah. <laughs> You're right there. It'll be me and Hercules. You won't be in on it. We'll retire, both of us. I'll buy a farm and put him in a field, let him run about free. Hercules Unchained! <laughs> <laughs> uh, let him run about? He ain't done any running in years. <laughs> He's forgotten how it goes. Blimey, it's only the shafts of the cart that hold him up now. <laughs> the best thing we can do with him is take him down to the cat's meat man. What did you say? The cat's meat men. Cat's meat? Cat's meat? Yes, cat's meat. You know. Walla walla cat's meat, eat brown bread, never see a donkey, fall down dead. <laughs> I didn't tell you, but I've had an estimate on him. 25 knicker. Do you mean to say you've taken Hercules down to the cat's meat yard? No, I didn't take him down. The cat's meat man happened to be passing. Well, actually, he was a sort of a spotter for a cat's meat firm. See, he was on his way to a selling plate at Kempton Park. <laughs> and he saw Hercules and commented on what bad nick he was in. And he offered me 25 quid on the spot. Well, I mean, it's worth it to him, isn't it? I mean, let's face up to it. Horse his size, he'd fill up a few thousand tins, wouldn't he? Of course, it wouldn't be pure Hercules. I mean, they shove a lot of rubbish in with them, you know. I mean, a bit of jelly, a bit of this, a bit of that. Yeah, stop it, of... stop it, stop talking like that. Tinned Hercules. <laughs> no, no, I'm not having it. He's going to die a natural death in a field with a proper burial. Ah, oh, with his legs folded across his chest, I suppose. <laughs> Both lots. He's not finishing his days piled up in tins in some grocer shop. That's final. I'm not having it. That's all there's to it. Oh, you get on my nerves. I mean, what's the use of me working my loaf, thinking up ways of improving the business when I'm faced with inefficiency all the time? I mean, he can hardly finish the round these days. I could get round twice as fast with a proper horse, double the turnover. I know why you don't want to get rid of him. You're contemporaries, ain't you? You was young together. Yeah, if he went, it'd bring it home to you, but you ain't got long to go, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're hanging on, I know. Look, Dynamo, are you going out this morning or are you not? By the time you go out, it'll be time to come home. Oh, don't you tell me how to tot, mate. Well, you can go and get the horse harnessed up and ready. Yes, that is true. It'll take me a couple of hours to get him on his feet. <laughs> oh, Peter, I do wish you wouldn't drink your tea from the saucer. You should hmm? use a mug like me. Yeah. Ugh. You put the milk in first again, didn't you? I always put the milk in first. That's why you shouldn't. For I'm the correct way to do it. In the best circles, the milk is always put in last. I mean, if I was to take you to the Savoy, and I saw you putting milk in first, if I'd know straight away that you was lower class, if I'd say, hello, he's a bit of a myth, isn't he? <laughs> myth? Myth. M I F. Milk in first. <laughs> it's just not done, Dad. Just a little tip, so I remember in the future. It just don't taste the same, milk in first. All right, then. You can take my dressing gown, Peter. I'm off. 
Put down chuck it under the bed, hang it up properly on a coat hanger. I'll be seeing you. Getting above his station, he is. Milk in last. <laughs> Daft. If you don't leave enough room for the milk, you're going to slop it right over into your saucer. Dad! What's up? There's something wrong with the horse. What do you mean? I think he's ill. He won't get up. Have you kicked him? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he still won't get up. Oh, Dad, his, his, his eyes are shut. Oh, my God. And he's sweating. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Let me have a look at him. Well, bring some blankets. Oh, look, Dad, I was only joking what I was saying about him. Dad, do you think he'll be all right? Oh, yes, he's been like this before, hasn't he? I mean, he'll be all right, won't he? There's nothing wrong with him, is there? I mean, nothing serious. You'd better send for the vet. Oh, God. Yes, I'll do that. That vet's been in there long enough, hasn't he? Look, he ought to know what's wrong with him by now. What's keeping him so long? Dad, I'm going in now. There's nothing you can do, son. It's no good walking up and down there like a pregnant father. <laughs> He's in good hands. Come on inside, have a cup of tea. Tea? At a time like this? Tea? It'll do you good. Calm your nerves. Oh, ain't it pathetic? Your face and the healing powers of a cup of tea. That's a nice answer to everything, ain't it? Have a nice cup of tea. The Englishman's panacea. Mother just died. Oh, what a shame. Have a cup of tea. <laughs> just been run over. Never mind, eh? Have a cup of tea. <laughs> I've been offered tea for disasters, funerals, operations, floods, wars, Dunkirk, the Blitz, piles, coronations, <laughs> hunger marches, hysteria and insomnia. A nice mug of tea in one hand and thumbs up to the camera with the other. Britain can take it. Well, they can have it. <laughs> well, I'm sick and tired of being a cheerful, chirpy, cockney sparrow. I'm entitled to be as depressed and miserable as anybody else. So you can stick your cup of tea right back down the spout. Son. Look, you can do what you like. What I need is a brandy. Son. Son. If anything happens to that horse, I shall be holding you personally responsible. Me? Yes, you. It's disgusting the conditions that animals had to live under. When did you last clean the stable out? It's filthy dirty. I clean that stable out every day. I could eat me dinner off that floor in there. Well, maybe you could, but the horse won't. <laughs> now, don't you start accusing me. I love that horse. If it weren't for me, he would have been dead years ago. You never cared about him. You never thought of him as having feelings. All the things you said about him. Great clodhopper, you once called him. Oh. And he knew. Animals ain't daft, you know. They know when somebody don't like them, they can sense it. Oh, I've no, never done nothing against that horse. I've always treated him with respect. You never brushed him? When was he last brushed? When did you last a brush over him? Oh, now, when I had him, I, I used to take him out. Yeah, that was a different tale. That horse was brushed every morning till he shone. You could see your face in him. And his tail was plaited like a young girl's hair and two big rosettes over his ears. Look, I'd take him out to collect rags, mate, not to a perishing football match. <laughs> and, and I looked after the cart. Fresh painted it was, with our name on it, all bright and shining. Ah, oh, we looked a picture as we set out of the morning. Sat up there like a king, I did. Proud, that's what I was, Proud. And Hercules was proud, too. He knew he looked good. His old neck arched up and his legs coming up like this, proud and haughty, both of us. Oh, God. <laughs> the banner of Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can sneer. But it's not like that now, is it? He knows he's been neglected. That's what's wrong with him. He's pining. He feels all broken down. Ugly. He's lost the will to go on. You talk like he's had a nervous breakdown. Look, he's an horse, Dad, not a nutcase. I mean, what do you want me to do? Put him on a couch and have a chat with him every morning? <laughs> and I'm going to make no difference poncing him up. I mean, it's dangerous enough getting near him at eight o'clock. 
I'm sure he'd be very pleased with me coming in at half past six in the morning with my brass comb and air grips and start putting his hair up in curlers. I'll get hoofed right up my kilt. You never cared for him. And now he's ill. Now, look, it's no use as us sitting here accusing each other. We've got a business to run. And we ain't got an horse. We're in stuck. But we can't afford to close down. Oh, Sue, so I don't know what we're going to do. You'll just have to go out with the hand cart, won't you? You're joking. <laughs> go out with the hand cart in winter? Have you ever tried pushing that thing when there's stuff on it? You're a young man. What about my fibrositis in my shoulder? You never said nothing about no fibrositis. Well, I have now. I, mean, I don't make a song and dance about my aches and pains. I mean, I don't groan, well, not like some people, but nevertheless, the fact remains. I have fibrositis in my shoulder and I ain't pushing no anchor. We'll have to starve then because I ain't got no money. Well, I won't have by the time I paid the vet. Oh, well, this is good, isn't it? Oh, a very well-organised concern, this is. One crisis and we're knackered. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about the threepenny bits? Where's the threepenny bits gone? Oh, we had to pay the rates, didn't we? And the street trader's licence and the corn chandler. He hadn't been paid for three months. He turned quite nasty. Oh, that's it, is it? A thriving business. At the annual general meeting of Steptoe and Son Limited, year ending 1965, the chairman, Mr. Albert Steptoe, yeah. hi, <laughs> rose to present his report to the shareholders. Gentlemen, he said, after a very strenuous year's trading, in which my son diligently flogged his guts out, <laughs> I am pleased to report that the company's position is as follows. Yes, yes. Capital held in reserve, one shilling and ninepence. <laughs> Company liabilities, the chairman. <laughs> Fixed assets include a yard full of unsaleable junk and a dead horse. He ain't dead. <laughs> the chairman amended. You'll have to work harder. He added. The report was unanimously rejected and shouts of resign was heard from all parts of the floor. Resign, 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 you old fool. Resign, resign, get away, you old fool. Resign, resign. resign. I think I'd better resign. get the vet to have a look at you as well. <laughs> that is a good idea. If that all snuffs it, I'm telling you, he might as well get his humane killer out and have a go at us as well. Because I'm fed up with it, Dad. I mean, I don't want to know. Well, not like this. I mean, what is the point? We stumbles along from one crisis to another. No, mate, let's all go together. Huh? You, me and the horse. A mass exit of the steptoes. Let the council pay for the funeral. Come on, let's get somebody back for our race. Yeah, shut up that morbid talk. I don't want to go. Why not? Anything's better than this. Oh, it won't hurt. One wallet with a steam hammer, it's all over. You won't feel a thing. I'll go and get the vetted. You leave him where he is. What's wrong with being dead? Oh, it's marvellous. No more getting up in the morning. A nice lying all day long. Stop it, stop Every it. day. No more worries. No more bills. Peace and quiet. Now there's nothing wrong in being dead, mate. It's the living bit that frightens me. Yeah. If you're so keen on being dead, why did you buy that old Anderson shelter when you thought America was going to have a go at Tuba? Shaking like a jelly, you were. Ah, ah, well, well, because I want to decide when I go, mate, not somebody else decide for me. And I'm ready to go now. Oh, my God, it's the vet. Let him in, then. No, no, not me, not me. You, you let him in. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll sit down here. I'll sit down. No, no, I can't put the kettle on. I'll make a cup of tea. Pull yourself together. Look, I suppose Hercules is all right. Or do you think he's passed away? Oh, I don't know. How should I know? Come in, come in. Oh, hello, Lionel. Oh, look who's here, Harold. Lionel Sturgis. Hello, Harold. Hello, Lionel. I just heard about the horse. Oh, yes. A few of the lads was talking down the yard. He's bad, is he? Yes, I'm afraid so. He's pretty dodgy, I think. Oh, I am sorry. The vet's out there with him now. You won't be able to go out today, then? No, 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 not today. Would you like a cover to you? No, no, I can't stop. I've got the horse and cart outside. Look, but I'll tell you what I come about. I, I hope you won't be offended, but seeing as how your place, like, I mean, you know, you're not being able to get out sort of thing with the horse being ill, like, well, I thought these might come in handy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Oh, uh, There's a sack full of good quality rags here, mostly cream. A bit of dark mixed up, but it's quality. I can't get rid of it all, you know. I'm more of a, a lead man myself. And I know you do a lot of rags. And I thought as how you 
can't get out, I thought, well, you might be able to place it, you know, um, if it'll help out at all, like. Uh, well, Lionel, I, I don't know what to say. It's it's very kind of you. Well, no, I mean, we've got to help each other, haven't we? I mean, you do the same to me. I mean, we've got to help each other, haven't we? Yeah, well, I just don't know what to say. How much do I owe you? Oh, you don't want to worry about that. You look, buy me a drink when the horse is better. No, no, no. I don't want to see you out of pocket. No, I insist on paying the trade prices. Now, so let's see. Oh, I'd say that's about five and a half pounds. That's worth a few, Bob. Don't worry about it now. I mean, pay me when you've placed them. I don't know what to say, Lionel. Well, don't say nothing. I mean, just copy, that's all. And the rest of the lads told me to tell you not to worry. While the horse is laid up, don't worry about not being able to get out. They'll let you have some of their stuff. Collect for themselves, collect for you. It's no skin off of their noses. Just see them all right at the end of the day. Just give them what they give for it. We won't forget this, Lionel. Yeah, that's all right, Elbert. Well, I'd better shoot off then. The lads will be passing by tomorrow to sort out what they've got for you. Well, I, uh, I hope Hercules will be all right. Thank you. Well, cheerio, then. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, cheerio. Cheerio. Uh, thanks again, Lionel. Okay. I'll give my regards to your mum. What about that, then? Yeah. Which was nice of him, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very nice. Here, Harold, look at the quality of this stuff. This is a suit. No holes in it. Get a couple of knickers from this on the market, run an iron over it, good as new. Where does he get it from? Oh, well, he must work a better class of neighbour than I do. I mean, I can't help it. Probably some old deer clearing out her old man's wardrobe. Luck of the draw. Harold... How many lads get down the yard these days? Well, I don't know. About seven or eight. Seven or eight? You know something? At this rate, we could do better if the horse was ill than when he's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the old devil. <laughs> and it's not charity, is it? <laughs> of course it ain't. <laughs> we'll pay them proper wholesale prices. And we'd do the same for them, wouldn't we? Of course yeah. we would. <laughs> and it's only Uncle Hercules can get back to work again. Oh, yes, it could be a blessing in disguise, old Hercules taken sick. He's picked the right time of the year. I didn't fancy going out in this weather. I mean, not with my fibrositis. Oh, yes, give me a chance to recuperate as well. Oh, yes, it'll be nice to have a lay-in in the morning with business as usual. Uh, uh, how long do you reckon... Hercules will be ill. Oh, what? A fortnight? Oh, yeah, at least a fortnight. Oh, that's not bad, is it? A fortnight in bed. Oh, yes. That's cheered me up no end, that. Oh, I feel better now. Ah, oh, yes. Life ain't so bad after all, is it? I feel sorry for Hercules, of course, I mean. But it's an ill wind, ain't it? May I come in? Oh, it's the vet. Oh, come in, Doctor. I'm not a doctor, I'm a mister. The infirmary wouldn't have let me practice on human beings. <laughs> is he, uh, is he going to be all right? Uh, have you got a drink or something? It's, it's cold out there. A drop of whiskey. Aha, now you're talking. <sighs> you want another? Oh, hi. Ah, that's not a bad drop of whiskey you got there. What were we, to what were we talking about? The horse. Oh, aye, aye, the horse. Is he, is he going to die? Die? What are you talking about? There's nothing wrong with the beast. There isn't. Nothing wrong with him. He's tired, that's all. Tired? Yes, he's asleep out there. He probably couldn't get to sleep last night. He's exhausted. Well, I've never heard of horses with insomnia before. <laughs> Well, it happens to us, laddie. There's no reason why it shouldn't have happened to them. And that's all that's wrong with him? Aye, that's all. I thought you said he was sweating, Harold. He was. He was soaked in it. That was rainwater. Look, Dad, I told you too many holes in that roof. He could have died of pneumonia. Well, he'll be all right in the morning. All he needs is a good night's sleep and he'll be as right as ninepence. He will, will he? Tomorrow morning. Aye, ready to go back to work strong as ever. Have another drink. Aye, I will. I was hoping you'd ask me. Look, I, I, I think that the horse ought to have a fortnight off. Complete rest. He's getting on, you see. We'd like to see him get 
properly better. There's nothing wrong with him, no. Yes, well, we don't want to take any chances, do we, now? Hey. And we'd like you to pop in every day to keep a check on him. Oh, there's no need. I'm a very busy man. We, we won't keep you long. Just pop by, leave the car outside. Look, there's plenty of whiskey here. Oh, well, don't mind that. Oh, and there's uh, no need to put it around that there is nothing wrong with him, is there? I mean, to be other traders, you know, be non-committal if they asked you. You know, wheels within wheels, politics. Well, if I don't say anything, I can't lie, can I? Oh, there's the question of my calling fees, of course. We'll see you're all right. Well, I must say it's nice to see people who are fond of their animals. Aye, he, he's just like one of the family. Right, then, we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hey, right, yeah. Uh, I'd cover the hole up in the stable roof if I were you. Yes, we'll do that. Cheerio, then. See you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, blimey. Half a bottle gone. Greedy Scotch knit. <laughs> oh, well, Dad, I'm going to bed. I shall see you in the morning. Mm. Oh, unless the place is on fire, don't wake me up before 12, will you? This could be a very pleasant fortnight. To sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Well, don't ever do it, son. We'll see what tomorrow will bring. Here, yeah, seven and a ten are all right. I'll uh, just put it on the way in, Oak. Three half crowns it is. How's Hercules? Well, there's no change, I'm afraid. It's going to be a long job. He's old, you see. He just doesn't seem to have the will to live. Ah, no, I am sorry. Yes, it's very sad. But we do appreciate what you boys is doing for us. I don't know how we would have managed without your help. Who's next? Hello, Jim. What you got there? Got the car tires, Harold. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. There's still a nice bit of tread left on these. Yeah, two bob each, do you? Is that all? Well, that's all I want for him, what I paid for him. You are a friend in need. Two florins it is, then. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, how's the horse? I uh, had to stay up all night with him again. Oh, dear, I am sorry. Yes, but that is the way it goes, isn't it? I mean, even in the midst of life, there is death. Who's next, Charlie? Here we are. Oh, that's a very nice selection of scrap metal there, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Oh, uh, excuse me a minute, yeah. Charlie. Uh, it's the vet. I think Dad and I had better see what his last bulletin is. Oh, sure, yeah. How is he, Doctor? But I told you yesterday, the animal's perfectly fit. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with him. Shh! Mm -hmm. Yes, but I think we ought to keep our voices down. I mean, we don't want to disturb him. Look, he's in perfect condition. In fact, he's getting restless cooped up in there. He could do with some exercise. Uh, yes, yes. Well, well, I'll walk him round the streets tonight when it's dark. Mm. Look, here's your ten bob. You know, you're wasting your money having me around every day. Look, I know what I'm doing. Now, you must excuse me. I've got business to transact. Look, you know where the whiskey is. Help yourself. Uh. Same time tomorrow. <laughs> Dad, lash the doctor up. Yeah. Uh, can I? No, uh... you can't. You keep off it. Yeah. Come along with me, yeah. doctor. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Charlie. That's oh, all right. What did he say? He's getting worse. Oh. Oh, he's on the danger list. Can I uh, pop in and see him? Uh, no, no. Uh, the doctor said no visitors. Oh, poor old devil. Yes, but there's nothing anyone can do now. I mean, it's up to him. Yeah. All we can do is hope. Hey, what's that? No, 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 that's probably his death throes. Oh. How much for this lot? Uh, uh, ten bob. Very fair. Half a bar. Oh. And the next, please. Now, I'll put that mattress over there, Bert, would you? Uh, uh, Claude, I'll, I'll be with you in, in a minute. Just hang on a minute. Dad, Dad, you want to tie his legs up or something? Sit on him. Give him a sedative or something. Uh, thank you. Thank you all for coming to help us in our hour of trouble. And I shall be nailing a bullet on the gate in the morning. Thank you. You've been listening to Wilfred Bramble and Harry H. Corbett as Steptoe and Son, Eric Woodburn as the vet, Leslie Dwyer as Lionel, and Peter Hawkins as Charlie. Written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, 
Adapted for radio by Gail Pedrick and produced by Bobby J.